Okay, hello, welcome to another Ginge Mathematician video. So I'm continuing with my tutorial on the TI Inspire GDC. Again, if you like this content, please like, please subscribe, please share it with your friends. It goes a long way for helping the YouTube channel and to spreading the knowledge of how to use the GDC because it's not definitely something not to be scared of. So please do like, please do subscribe. So last time we looked at this function here, which is the calculator function and pressing various buttons on here. What we're going to look at, and this is probably the most useful function on the GDC itself, is to actually look at some graphs. Now you can press this button here, or you can press new, and then go to add graphs, which gives you this page here. And it even loads this up ready to write in your function. So we can write in any quadratic, linear, cubic functions into here. So let's write in a function. So we're going to use x, so you can just choose the x button down here, x squared minus x minus 6. So we'll start with a quadratic, and you'll get a nice picture here. Now, if you do not see the actual graph itself on your diagram, what you can do is go to Menu, Window Zoom, and Zoom Fits, while the best functions on the TI Inspire compared to some other calculators. And this will then allow the graph to actually change its axis so you can see this particular graph in more detail. It's a fantastic function and it saves you from having to zoom out and zoom in. So if you go to menu, window zoom, zoom in and zoom out and change the axes by using window settings or these functions. So it's a very, very, very useful function. Okay, so we're gonna take this quadratic and work out a few things from it. Most of the things that you need for IGCSE are in the following menu, so watch carefully. We have menu, analyze graph, and most things that we want to use will be in this part here. Let's start with zero. So the zeros of the function are the roots or the x-intercepts, lots of different words for the same thing. We click on this, and then we have to tell the calculator where to scan for that particular root, where it crosses the x-axis. So we see it crosses down here somewhere, but for the calculator to know where it is, we click before it, we click after it, and it will highlight the zero, and then you've got your coordinate of minus two zero. What's even better is you can actually take the coordinate and move it. So if it's in the way, you can actually move it so you can see it more clearly, or I can even move it over here. Likewise, if I want to find this root here, I go to menu, analyze graph, zero, click before it, click after it, and there we have it. We have three zero, which you can now see nice and clearly. So these are the two roots. Our next activity is to work out the minimum point. Notice it goes all the way down. There's a minimum down here, the very smallest point, and then goes upwards. So we do the same process. We go to menu, analyze graph, minimum, we click, and then we have to tell the calculator where to scan. So we know it's roughly around here somewhere. So we click before, we click after, and then it will read it off as, in this case, 0 0.50002. Sometimes it's not entirely accurate, but I think we can properly assume here that the x coordinate of our minimum point will be 0 0.5, and then our y coordinate will be minus 6.25. Okay, our next useful function is using this to solve equations. If you press the tab button over here, you'll be able to now put in another function. I'm going to draw in the line, what should I choose, 20. And you'll see you get a straight line and a different color for your second function. What you can do is actually use this calculator to solve the two equations. So when one equation is equal to another equation, you can then actually solve and work out the value of the answer that solves both equations. Again, it will go in the same place. So menu, we go to analyze graph, we go to this time intersection, and this allows us to find the intersection point where they cross. So we click before, we click afterwards, and then we've got our value. And I'll move it across so you can see it more clearly. Likewise, to find the other one, we go to analyze graph, intersection, click before, click after, and then we have 5.623475.
okay? And that allows you to solve the equation. So this would be the solution to x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 20. We're essentially solving that equation and finding the answer to it. Now you can do this uh, using different methods. So we could, for example, we could go back to our calculator view and use something we've looked at before. Go to algebra, polynomial tools, find roots of polynomial. And notice if I type in by moving the 20 to the left hand side, we get minus 26, and press enter, you actually get exactly the same answers. Notice if you solve the quadratic and do it in normal way, that is bring everything to the left hand side, we get exactly the same answers as if we look at our graph instead, yeah, which I will put here, like so. Notice these answers are exactly the same as what we did. So those are the key functions on your GDC. Knowing your zoom fit on the graph, knowing the, how to find intersection points, knowing how to find minimum points and maximum points in the same way, and finding the roots of the equation. Most of these options that you need, you'll find in this section here. Okay. Now there is another button that I would like to highlight before I finish, and that is the button trace. So this is the way that the old calculators used to work out minimums and maximum points. You can actually go along the graph and scan, and when you hit a zero, it will actually label that it will tell you it's a zero. If I keep going, okay, we can't exactly get the intersection point, but we've got our zero. We've got our y-intercept, we haven't talked about that, but you could also calculate the y-intercept for you. You can also work out the minimum and actually highlight these as we go along. Yeah, there's another zero. Now, the reason it won't entirely do the intersection point is because of this, it's a long decimal, so it won't entirely find it. But this is a, another way of just highlighting whole value answers to what we've looked at before. Also a very useful function. Right, so that was quite a quick tutorial, but that really goes through the key basics that you need to know in order to succeed by drawing graphs on your GDC. Again, please like, please subscribe. I do really appreciate the support. Feel free to leave a comment, say how much you liked it, or make sure maybe you want to make a comment and say, okay, I'd like a video on this or that. I'm more than happy to help. All right, bye-bye for now.